So we've just come out with a new feature inside of Easel that allows you to bring in 3D models and then carve them out on any of the machines that you might have. Now we've seen lots of people make lots of really cool things, but we've also seen some people having some questions around certain issues they might have specifically with those 3D models. So in this video, we're gonna walk through everything that kind of happens before you bring stuff into Easel, specifically what is a 3D model, where do you find it, and what are some of the common problems you might have when you bring it in. So the very first thing is what is a 3D model? In our case, we are talking about STLs. And STL is just a short name for stereolithography, which is really just a fancy term for a bunch of different triangles that go all around a shape to make the actual 3D model. In fact, some people actually call STL standard triangle language. But the big thing you need to keep in mind is the more triangles you have inside of a model, the more detailed the model is going to be, but also the bigger the file size. And the file size is probably the biggest issue we've been seeing people finding when they're bringing models into easel. But before we talk about how big the models are, let's actually find some models. We have an article online that walks through a bunch of these different resources. We're going to hit a few right now. The first is STL Finder, and it kind of scrapes through a bunch of other websites. So this actually is a pretty good one to go to to start out. We're going to search for a wavy flag. And I'm going to put in CNC uh, just so it knows that we're looking not for like a 3D model that you might 3D print, uh, but one that you're going to be able to cut out. Now I'm going to get a ton of ads, but you can see it's going to give you a bunch of different results. A lot of them coming from CG Trader as well as Thingiverse uh, right here. Now that one's great, but you might run into an issue where there's a lot of dead links. So sometimes it works best just to go straight to the source. So a bunch of different ones out there like Free 3D, CG Trader, Fangs, Turbo Squid, and kind of the biggest version of these type of sites is Thingiverse, where there are just tons and tons of different models. Now the big issue you're going to run into when you're using a site like this, most of the times they're really set up for someone who has a 3D printer. So you're going to have a full 3D model. You're not really going to have a model that's designed to be cut out on a CNC. So I actually recommend people going to Facebook groups that are CNC specific. And a lot of times I actually just get my models off of Etsy. And yes, that does mean that I'm paying for these models, but a lot of times that license actually means I can sell whatever I make with it. So you do want to be careful with copyrights. And I find by actually going to a paid site and buying it from whoever created the model directly, you're going to be good to go. So I've just searched in 3D CNC files on Etsy, and you can see there are a bunch on here. Here. And actually this dragon one right here is one that we carved in our promo video. And you might see some of the other ones in here as well, because that's mostly where I got them, including this wavy American flag. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and actually buy this one and I'm going to go ahead and download it. Okay, so now that you've got your file, let's talk about what happens when you bring it into Easel. One of the big things we see is the file is actually too big. So 100 megabytes is the max size that Easel will let you import. After that, some of the calculations take a really long time. And we definitely encourage you guys to reduce reduce those file sizes down. So if I open up a new project inside of Easel, I come up to project and then import 3D STL. You can also hit this little 3D STL import on the left as well. Choose the file. I'm going to bring in one of my big ones. And these are actually these 3D door reliefs. So if you're going to do a door panel, it's going to be over 100 megabytes and it's this guy. So this is 193 megabytes. I'm going to open it and it's going to tell you that your max size is 100 megabytes and it gives you this option down here at the bottom, the My Mini Factory Mesh Simplification that allow you to reduce it down. And this guy is actually pretty easy. You're just going to bring this in. It's it's going to process it and it's going to reduce it. You can set the percentage that you want it to reduce it by and then hit simplify and then you're going to be able to download it. We're now down to a 96 megabyte and you can see this has been brought in. Now, one thing with that mesh simplification tool, the max limit on it is actually 200 megabytes. So if you have a file that is bigger than that, you're going to have to use a different tool to do that. I like to use Fusion 360 or even Blender. And the big thing with this is even though you're bringing that file size and those details down, you're really not going to lose the quality when you actually go to carve it out just because you're really limited by the diameter of your actual bit. And typically any details that you would find that are over 100 megabytes, you're not going to be able to actually see them when it carves out out anyway. So I would definitely play around reducing that file size down even further and see how it affects your carve times and then test it out and see if the result is something that you're good with. Okay, so let's talk about some of the typical problems you might see when you import a model. One that's pretty common is whoever actually created the model, they define what is up. So when you bring it in, it might look like something like this. This is that American flag that we got earlier, and I've actually messed this one up myself. But you have this option to define what surface is pointing up. And actually, this one is correct. So if I do hit top, 
as my top, uh, it's correct. But if it's looking different, your top is probably defined as a different surface. So easiest thing to do is to cycle through these until you get it where you like it and then you are good to go. Now, Easel will automatically resize this for you, but if you want to do a specific size to your material, you can always play around with their settings right here to get to that. Let's say we wanted this to be two feet wide. I'm actually going to lock all of these and hit 24 inches. And there we have a pretty good flag that we're going to be able to carve out. But when I did that, you're actually going to see one of the other problems that we see people run into. And that's going to be your actual model is thicker than the material that you are using. This is especially true if you're carving something all the way out to the bottom, which in this case, that's how this is set up. And the material is that green box. You can see that we're going above the material and you can definitely see that over here. The thickness is 0.789 inches. So the best way to fix that is to actually reduce your Z height on your model. And you can see we're getting this warning up here at the top that's basically telling us the same thing. And what's nice is you can reduce this independent of your X and Y. So I'm going to unclick my lock and my material thickness is 0.5 inches. So if I set this to 0.5, you're going to see that only the Z thickness is going to change but our X and our Y stays the same. And then another option, depending on how thick your model is, you might actually have some material that really isn't adding anything to your model. So you can see with this one, we probably have like 0.1 of an inch that is not being used. So you can actually drop your model down in position. So over here on the Z axis, so minus 0.05 maybe. And you can see that we are not going to lose any of the detail. And as you drop this further and further down, you'll start to actually see the white and that actually won't be carved. So if we generate our tool pass, you can see all the white in there where it actually kind of bottoms out when it's carving. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is if you actually are working with a true fully 3D model, specifically what that's gonna look like if you try to carve it out related to undercuts. And undercuts are basically everything you wouldn't see if you're just looking straight down on your model. So if it goes out and then it comes back in, you're not gonna be able to carve that because it's carving straight down. And a good way to look at that is to bring in a full 3D model. So this is actually a 3D model of Baby Yoda, and I'm a huge Star Wars nerd, so might as well use him. I'm going to flip this down. So I set the front to the top. Now I actually am going to make him a good bit smaller. So I'm going to set this to like 1.5 inches. All right, so he's now a good bit smaller. We'll set this to two. And then I'm gonna drop him down so he's halfway through the material. Now to show you what this would look like if we tried to cut this out, I'm gonna go ahead and hit generate tool pass. And so if we show the preview, you can kind of see what is going on, specifically when you're looking at the hand. So the hand was actually extending further than the material, so it's cut off right here at the top. But the hand goes back in, so if we flipped over back to the model, you can see this actually cuts back in, and that is pretty much an undercut. So you can do full 3D objects, you just have to make sure they don't cut back underneath. We've seen several people do chess pieces where you just cut one side, you flip it over, you cut the other side just like this, but with those chess pieces, you don't have any of those undercuts, or if you do, they're not really noticeable once you cut this out. And the last thing we wanted to talk about has to do with your cut settings. So as always, your cut settings are going to have a big impact on your overall finished project, but 3D specifically, the cut settings are going to have a big impact on the overall time. And you can see here at the bottom, we're actually giving you estimates even before you go to generating tool pass. So when I'm looking at this flag, you can see our, we have got our roughing bit set to a quarter of an inch, and we have our finishing bit set to an eighth of an inch. And if I come over to my cut settings, you can see what these are set to. Now the step over on your finishing pass is where you're going to be able to save a lot of time. And the step over is literally how much over this moves in relation to the thickness of your bit between each pass. So right now this is only going to move over 12% of the thickness of the bit. So whatever 12% of an eighth of an inch is. And so our finishing is going to take between one to two hours. If I drop this down to something like five, it's first going to give me an error and say this might take a really long time. And you can see that the estimate is now giving us four to five hours. So if if you want to save time, increase your step over. This is also really good to test on maybe like a small piece to see if you're still gonna be able to get your details because you might be able to crank that up higher and still be able to save 
time. Now, depending on your machine, you can also crank up your feed rate and your plunge rate. The plunge rate, especially on the 3D, there's a lot of up and downs. So the higher you can crank that, the faster this is gonna be able to cut out. Okay, we hope you guys are having fun using 3D. Or if you're having issues or questions, be sure and reach out to us, whether it's directly to our customer success team or over on forums. And if there's a feature you'd like to see us cover in a video in the future, be sure and leave a comment below. Okay, until next time, we can't wait to see what you guys make. See you guys.